went through this exam paper and the questions were riddled with selective breeding. Selective breeding this, selective breeding that. So today I'm going to show you and give you examples of what selective breeding is. Okay, it is a major topic and that's why we need to have a sound understanding of the topic. Okay, today let's first look at selective breeding in dogs. We love dogs so it's a nice way to start off the lesson. Gamekeepers in the 1800s had a problem. Poachers were entering their lands and stealing their game birds before the shooting season. Their dog, which was a mastiff, was big and strong, right? And a great companion, but it wasn't aggressive or fast enough to catch the poachers. They also had another dog with them, known as a bulldog. Now that was fast and aggressive, however, not strong enough to pin them down, the poachers. So what could you do in that situation? Well, they selectively bred both dogs to create the bull mastiff. I have seen that dog in Batman, the, 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 the Dark Knight, yeah, the one with the Joker in it. So that is a perfect example of selective breeding. Ladies and gentlemen, let's say for example, me and you are farmers and it's near Christmas time, we need some woolly fleas coming out, Christmas jumpers, Salah hot cakes. Which sheep would you choose? And be honest, you choose the one with the most wool on. And that's exactly what selective breeding is. Selective breeding is about selecting the characteristics that you desire and then selecting the parents which show the correct characteristics. You will choose a male and female. You will call them the parents. You will ask them to breed. They will have children or offspring. And then you will choose the offspring which have shown the desired characteristics. And then you will repeat that and repeat that and repeat that. Now, even though selective breeding has been going on for a very long time, it's a very good method to selecting the desired characteristics that you're looking for. It is still a flawed problem. Let's say, for example, we start selectively breeding your, you know, a sheep. And let's say we have the woolly sheep. Let's say, for example, what about if the, the other woolly sheep that are not so woolly have a better immune system? So you are discarding genetic pools right now and really focusing on what you want and this can lead to genetic inherited diseases. Okay, so this is some issues as well. You can have a read on the screen about some issues with selective breeding. Again, there's advantages and disadvantages to many things, but I like selective breeding on the whole. I think it's a nice way of selecting the characteristics that you want. What would be amazing for you to do in this lesson is selectively breed the correct X-Men both male and choose a male and a female to destroy the one and only Magneto. I grew up watching this show and I know one on one no one is on Magneto's level. What I'd like you to do is draw the X-Men. How would it look like? So choose two, a male and a female. Draw the new X-Men and what kind of powers and characteristics would the new superhero have in order to defeat Magneto? Anyway, I hope you've understood selective breeding. I've shown you some examples of selective breeding and hopefully now you can apply your knowledge across and do this example. 